Greetings and welcome to us all on this Easter Sunday morning, the 12th of April. Kirana tato kato toa i te aroa maata o to tato atu ko Yesu Mesia. Whakalofa lahi atu ki a mutoruosi ke he ngoa he iki atautolu ko Yesu Mesia. Whaatalo whaatulu pa ia malu malu o le ao fia i le suafa o lo tato ali'i o Yesu Keriso. In the name of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, I greet and welcome all who are listening or tuning in to our Easter service this morning. Today is Easter Sunday, or Resurrection Sunday, a day in which we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, from his death. The resurrection of Jesus reminds us that God makes all things new. Let us worship God. For our call to worship this morning, I would like you to repeat after me what I'm going to say. Please say after me. Christ is risen Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Please bow your heads as we offer to God our opening prayer this morning. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you because you loved the world so much that you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and to save us, so that we too might be called your children. Help us to know the joy of this day, Lord God. Help us to give you thanks for your wonderful sacrifice. We pray that you open our eyes to see your grace in action. We pray that you bless this time of worship in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Our Bible reading for our service this morning. Our Bible reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24 and I shall read from verse 13 to verse 35 Luke chapter 24 verse 13 to verse 35 are these words let us hear the word of God on that same day two of Jesus followers were going to a village named Emmaus about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem and they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened as they talked and discussed Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them they saw him but somehow did not recognize him Jesus said to them what are you talking about to each other as you walk along they stood still with sad faces one of them named Cleopas asked him are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have been happening there these last few days what things he asked the things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth they answered this man was a prophet and was considered by God and by all the people to be powerful in everything he said and did our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and he was crucified. And we had hoped that he would be the one who was going to set Israel free. Besides all that, this is now the third day since it happened. Some of the women of our group surprised us. They went at dawn to the tomb, but could not find his body. They came back saying they had seen a a vision of angels who told them 
that he is alive. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it exactly as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, How foolish you are! How slow you are to believe everything the prophets said! Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. And as they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they held him, they held him back saying, Stay with us. The day is almost over and it is getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them, took the bread and said the blessing, and then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others and saying, the Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The two then explained to them what had happened on the road and how they had recognised the Lord when he broke the bread. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And to God's name be all glory and all praise, now and forevermore. Amen. This time of our service, I'm going to lead us in our time of prayer. Our prayer of thanksgiving our prayer of confession, and our prayer of intercession. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, for this Resurrection Sunday, a day that your Son Jesus rose from the dead and was victorious over sin. We thank you, Lord God, for the power of the Resurrection. It renews us daily, and it helps us to live life in your grace and in your mercy, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us in the week that has ended and all the challenges that we have faced during this time of lockdown and the state of emergency. You are with us, Lord God, always directing our lives, lifting our hearts up when frustrations and worries come to us. And so we thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your only Son, it is because of his death and resurrection he has forgiven our sins and he has given to us the gift of salvation to eternal life. We acknowledge before you, Lord God, that we have done wrong, many wrong things. We confess before you all our sins and we do so praying for your forgiveness to be upon each and every one of us, Lord God. Bless the suburb of Mangere, the city of Auckland, our country of New Zealand, and the world that we live in, Lord God. Help us to respect and support and care for one another during this difficult time we are in. Create in each and every one of us, Lord God, the spirit of unity and love that whatever we do and whatever we say may portray and reflect the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We remember in our prayers this morning, Lord God, all those who are sick, those who are ill, those who are recovering from operations, and those who are seeking or awaiting medical treatments. Lord God, we pray for them. Pray that you bless them. Remember also this morning, Lord God, all those who are sick because of the COVID-19, those who are self-isolating, Heavenly Father, remember also those who are in quarantine at this time. Bless them all, together with each and every one of us who reside in our own family bubbles or units, Lord God.
pray that you grant each and every one of us that patience and that hope to continue on. We also remember in our prayers this morning, Lord God, all those who are elderly, the vulnerable, the children in their last week before they begin again schooling in a new way online. We pray, Lord God, for your blessing upon those who are bedridden in rest homes. Heavenly Father, through your Holy Spirit, may they feel your comforting presence and your strength through the power of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the world, all countries of the world. Pray for the World Health Organization. Grant to them all in all countries wisdom and knowledge as they deal with this coronavirus. Heavenly Father, we also remember at this time those countries in the Pacific or throughout the world who have been affected by the cyclone. Pray that you grant to them your peace help from different aid organizations of the world lord god heavenly father pray also for your blessing upon all who are listening in to this broadcast this morning those families and relatives who live in other parts of the world bless them protect them all with your love lord god remind us always that we are connected with them through the power of prayer this morning, Lord God, as we listen to your word being preached, speak to us. May your holy word be like a seed planted into the hearts and to the minds of each and every one of us, that it may grow and that it may flourish, Lord God. Heavenly Father, these are the prayers of our hearts to get all of all our own silent prayers that we bring before you. In and through the name of your Son, our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us when to pray by saying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive them that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now this morning, we now come to our time of sermon, a time in which we will listen to the Word of God, a sermon in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. The death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus is a special time for Christians because it reminds us that God gave to us the promise of the resurrection. Now our Bible reading for this morning was from Luke chapter 24 verse 30, verses 13 to verse 35 and it describes how it is Easter morning but it also tells us how there is no joy. There is only sadness and there is fear. <coughs> Two disciples are on the road to Emmaus. And Emmaus is a village not very far from Jerusalem. One of the disciples, his name is Cleopas. And we're not told the name of the other disciple. But they were followers of Jesus. So they believed in Jesus. They knew what happened on that Friday. They couldn't forget in their minds because it only just happened on Friday. Jesus was crucified and he died. And then after he was buried in a tomb. Now, our Bible reading from Luke chapter, um, Luke chapter 24, it also refers to and it indicates that the disciples had heard, they, they had heard rumours that Jesus' tomb was empty. And they weren't sure what had, what had happened to him. But um, 
it was hard for them to believe uh, rumors about a resurrection. All they knew was that Jesus died. He died on the Friday and he was buried. They saw it. They saw what had happened. They also saw and they knew that the Romans knew how to crucify Jesus. Crucifixion was one of the worst ways to die. But all that happened to Jesus on Friday. And it was still in their minds, the minds of these two disciples that we read about in Luke chapter 24, walking. Now it's Sunday morning. These two disciples, as I said, they're walking. They're walking home. And they're replaying in their minds what has happened. They're asking themselves, if Jesus was the Son of God, how could this have happened? They try to remember in their minds the things about Jesus. And then suddenly, a stranger joins them. And he walks with them. The stranger is actually the risen Lord Jesus. But somehow, these two disciples don't recognize Jesus. They only recognize him at the very end of our Bible reading. Such is the power of the risen Lord Jesus. In that when they did recognize him at the end of our Bible reading, their lives are changed forever. People of God, everyone who's listening in this morning, the message of Easter can be summarized like this. Because he rose from the dead, Jesus is with us everywhere, at all times, in every situation. Because he rose from the dead, Jesus is with us everywhere, always. In every situation. Ko liu tu mai ha Yesu Kriso, ko faka ko mai ke tau tolu, ko Yesu mata, ko Yesu mo tau tolu, ke he tau manga hosi. Ihe ni, mo fe nonga ha tau tolu, ke he maui ne. Ko api i mai te tu aka oanga o Yesu ki tato. Te vaitata nei aia ki tato i te au atianga, ravarai, i te au ngai, ravarai, e i te tai au atianga i tō tātou nei o rānga. O le toi tū o Iesu Kiriso, e a oa o mai ia i tātou, o lo o fa, tasi mai Iesu, Ma i tātou, i teimi uma. Because he rose from the dead, Jesus is with us always, everywhere, at all times, in every situation. There are some points I'd like to make in this sermon for this morning. The first one is this. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Sometimes we don't recognize him. In verse 16 of Luke chapter 24, it says, They saw him, but somehow they didn't recognize him. They saw him, but somehow they didn't recognize him. Why didn't they recognize Jesus? After all, they were they were followers of Jesus. Some people say, well, maybe they didn't expect to see him. These two uh, disciples, they didn't expect to see the risen Lord. So that's why they didn't recognize him. Because their eyes weren't open. Some people say, well, because it was, um, it was at sunset and maybe they couldn't see properly because of the light. But... Uh, you go back to the text, or go back to the uh, the Bible reading. It seems to indicate that here they saw Jesus, but they didn't know it was Jesus. They saw Jesus, but they didn't know it was Jesus. Somehow they didn't recognize him. 
I think when we think about what these two disciples were thinking, we can identify with uh, perhaps what they were going through. And it's all part of their human nature and was uh, part of our human nature. I mean, if you think about it, if you lose a loved one, if you lose a loved one, you think about them. You recall the good things about that person and also how we miss that person. And so this is what these two disciples talked about with the stranger. Remember, the stranger is Jesus. But these two disciples don't know that. Then the stranger asked them, what are they talking about? And uh, the two strangers are surprised by this question because everyone in Jerusalem knew about the crucifixion of Jesus. They knew about the death of Jesus. And so they, they ask, they say to the stranger, are you the only one who hasn't heard? And so they, they then tell the stranger about the story of Jesus, that he was a good man, that he healed the sick, that he taught the people, that he was betrayed, that he was beaten and crucified, and that the people mocked and they teased him. And everything they told the stranger was in the past tense. They couldn't understand how what happened on the Friday could connect with all the things that Jesus had actually said and taught them. You see, they remember, they, they actually heard the rumours of Jesus rising. They'd heard the rumours, but no one had yet seen the risen Lord. You know, if he, if the Lord had risen, these two disciples would say, well, where is he? People of God, everyone who's listening in this morning, this is what happens when you don't connect what happens on Good Friday to what happens on Easter Sunday. This is what happens when you just leave Easter Friday to be on itself without putting that connection through to Easter Sunday. Without the resurrection, the cross is nothing. Without the resurrection, the cross is nothing. It ends up just being a story that has no meaning. So sometimes we can't recognize Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. That's the first point. Second point, sometimes we're slow to believe. Sometimes we're like these two disciples. We take a lot of convincing before we actually believe. These two strangers, they share their feelings. And the stranger, who was actually Jesus, just listens patiently to them. And when they finish talking, Jesus then begins to speak. And he calls them fools. Which simply means they were slow to apply the truth. They already know. They already know the truth. Jesus says to them, how slow you are to believe everything. To believe what the prophets had said. And he tells them off for not being able to apply the scriptures. To apply what happened on Good Friday to the teachings that Jesus had taught them. Jesus tells them that they should have known what God had said. They should have believed in it. And he tells them it was necessary for, for Jesus, for Christ to suffer and to die on the cross. And that this was all part of God's plan to glorify the Son. Remember, Jesus did not die against his will. No one took Jesus' life. No. Jesus gave his life for us. The cross was not an accident. It was part of God's plan from the beginning. And this is what the prophet spoke of in the Old Testament. These two disciples, they listened as the stranger told them 
Everything in the scriptures point towards Jesus Christ. People of God, let us not misunderstand the plan that God made for this day, Easter Sunday. Otherwise, we will be like those two disciples. We also will be slow to believe. Now, the final point for the sermon. Sometimes, Jesus seems to leave us. Sometimes, it only appears that Jesus seems to leave us. In verse 28 to 32, it tells us how Jesus was eating supper with Cleopas and the other disciples. Remember, they still do not know that the stranger they're talking to is Jesus. And in verse 28 it says, Jesus acted as if they were going to leave, as if he was going to leave. Now the word acted means he pretended. Jesus wasn't trying to deceive them, no. Instead, Jesus tries to make them think that he's going to leave them so that they can invite him to stay. Sometimes our Lord Jesus, some, he, sometimes he see, it seems as if he's going to leave us so that what he's trying to do is to make us ask him to stay. To stay so we can seek him and so we can rely upon him for more. People of God, there are days when we feel alone. Days when we feel confused. Such days are all part of God's plan to remind us to rely on God and to pray to God. And Jesus comes in when he is invited. In other words, Jesus came in because they asked him. And he ate with them. And he had fellowship with them. And now, because of that, these two disciples recognized who Jesus was. And then after that happened, Jesus left. People of God, there will always be times when we feel overwhelmed and frustrated. Times when we feel stressed times when we feel anxious and over the past few weeks that we have been in lockdown and in our state of emergency there are those who've gotten used to this lockdown and there are others who are still struggling with them no doubt it has been a frustrating and a stressful time and yet maybe maybe we are starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel let us wait and continue to pray to god for direction and as we've been told continually told by the leaders of uh, new zealand we need to be careful and we need to move cautiously remember our story today jesus came in the form of a stranger he came to the two disciples. He saw their frustration. He saw their grief. He saw their stress. He understood what they were going through. And in the end, he enabled them to see and to recognize him through his encouragement. Jesus comes to us in our times of difficulty. Even when you think you're alone, Jesus is with us. The resurrection teaches us that Jesus is with us at all times, everywhere. As we move from Good Friday to now Easter Sunday, we move from the death to the resurrection. We move from the sadness to the joy and to the hope that God has given to us because Jesus, God's Son, has risen from the dead. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. We are not alone. He is risen. 
He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite everyone now to, to give the peace of Christ to each other. You may do this either through the elbow touching or through uh, the raising of your eyebrows or through this means, or even if, you are, if you're in your own bubble, um, you, you know how to give the peace of Christ. So at this time, the peace of Christ be with you all. Please offer that to, to those who you are with this morning. Now, <clears throat> throughout the week, um, in the devotions, as well as on the Good Friday service, I had uh, reminded us all that today would be a Holy Communion Sunday, and we would be celebrating the Holy Communion because we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus so uh, please make sure you have your glass of water or juice or something like that and a piece of bread near you at this time as we prepare now for the Holy Communion. Friends, God prepares a feast for you and all people, a feast of good things, a feast of peace. Come and taste, eat and be filled, drink deep and never thirst again. Come to the feast God prepares. May we be the loaves shaped by the hands of God. May we be as the wine of the Spirit poured out that others may know joy. And may the love of Christ be the yeast, the flower of thought, word and deed. This time I'm going to read the words of the institution in our different island languages. Firstly, in our Cook Island language. I rauka oki i aku i te atu. Tāku i tuku katoa atu ki a koutou nai. E kua rave te atu rā ko Yesu i te manga i te pō. I piki kā aia mai ei aiara. E oti a kera i aia i te aka mitaki, vava i ora, nā ko atura. Kā rawe mai, kā kai. Ko tāku, ko papa te ia i ati ati ia no koutou nei, e pera koutou, e manakoanga ki aku. E kua pera katoa oki te kapu, ke oti a ke tāna kaianga nā ko atura. Te ia nei kapu, ko te korero, metu, ko, ko te korero motu o ia i tōku nei toto. E pera katoa koutou ki a inu e i manakoanga i aku. Kua kai, kai anake koutou i te ia nei manga, e kua inu i te ia nei kapu. Kua ka ki te ia koutou i te matenga o te atu, e tae Ua mai ayara. Now, uh, whanga hau ni we. Ko au foki, ne mau e au mai he iki e mena. Ko a tuku atu e au ki a mutoru. Ko e pō ia, ne, ko e pō ia ni, ne afu ai e iki ko Yesu. Ne tō ai e ia e aretu. Ko a whakaue, si tō fitofi ai, Mo e pehe ange, ki a tutoa si kai, ko e hākua sino hane, ko a tofi tofi mō luku toto mā muto. Ki a eke mutolu e mena nei, mō e whakamanatu anga ki au. Si pihe foki e kāpi niu, ko osi e kai mena, ko a pehe ange, ko e kāpi niu nei, 
koe mawehanga fōu ia ke e hākua toto, ki a eke mutolu e mena nei mō, mō whakamanatuanga ki au ke he tau aho osi kua inu ai e mutolu. A koe tau aho osi kua kai ai e mutolu e a reto nei mō inu e kāpiniu nei kua whakairo atu e mutolu e mātu leia iki ato a ele mai a ia. In the Samoan language. Fa whonga mai upu le fa tonunga o le talisuanga a lō tātou o liu Iesu e pei ona maua mai ai le apostolo o Paulo. O a fōi no o maua mai le ali ili mea no o tu i nga tu ai a te autou O lea lava pōna fa alata ai le li o Iesu Keriso, na ia tango ai i le a reto, o e ia faf tai, ona tofi tofi ai lea ma fai atu, o lo u tino le nei wa tofi tofi ma sui o o tau, ia o o tau faia le nei mea ma fa amana tunga i ate au. O e ia fa pefo i le ipu, i na wa umauna ai, ua fa ape atu. O le ipu le nei o le whenga i ngā fōu lea i lo toto, i o tau whaia le nei mea ma whaia mantunga i ate au, i aso uma tau te whainu ai. O wā o aso uma tau te ai ai le nei a reto ma whainu le nei ipu, tau te whaia i lo atu ai le maliu o le lii, se ia a whio mai o ia. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and he said to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the saving death of the Lord Jesus until he comes. This time now I invite you to hold your glass and your piece of bread. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, with everyone's bread and everyone's cup, Lord God, we pray that you will now set them apart for this Holy Supper, that they may become for us the elements of the Holy Communion, symbolizing the body and the blood of our risen Lord Jesus. In your name do we pray. Amen. We now come before God in our great Eucharistic prayer of thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord God, we praise you and we give you thanks for the opportunity to be renewed and refreshed. We thank you for the sacrament of Holy Communion, the forgiveness of sins and for the opportunity of all people to be renewed in mind and in spirit. We thank you, Lord God, for creating the whole world. We thank you for your promise to all your people and for the life we know in Jesus Christ, your Son. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Leading his followers, he guides us. Dying on the cross, he rescues us. And risen from the dead, he gives new life. Therefore, with all the company of heaven and with all your people of all places and times, we proclaim your greatness and praises. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Lord God, by what we do here in remembrance of Christ, we celebrate his perfect sacrifice on the cross and his glorious resurrection and ascension. And we declare that he is Lord of all and we prepare for his coming in his kingdom. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, this bread may be for us the body of Christ and this wine the blood of Christ. Accept our sacrifice of praise and as we eat and drink at his command, unite us to Christ as one body in him and give us strength to serve you in the world. And to you, one holy and eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give praise and glory now and forevermore. Amen. As this grain was once scattered in the fields and has come together in one bread, so we, with all our different needs and hopes, we come together as one, for we share one bread. The cup which we share is the cup of the new covenant written in our hearts and witnessed by Jesus. The gifts of God for the people of God. All is now ready for us to do our communion. At this time, I invite you all to now hold your piece of bread and I will say the following words. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body given for you, for the remembrance of me. Please eat your bread and say a prayer. This time now I invite you all now to to hold your glass and I will say the words Jesus said this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me you may now drink and say your prayer. We continue in our prayer. Heavenly Father, on this Resurrection Sunday, we give you glory, we give you praise and thanks, Lord God, for you have, through your Son, defeated the power of sin and have been victorious over death. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this sacrament of Holy Communion, for all that it means to us. We thank you that we are joined together with the communion of saints. We pray that this sacrament and the elements and all that it symbolizes the body and blood of our Lord Jesus may provide us with strength and courage as we journey into this new week. We pray that you may bless us all, this nation of New Zealand and all countries of the world as we continue to fight against this, this virus, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for your blessing upon each and every one of us. We pray this prayer and through the name of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, just before 
we conclude our service for this morning, there are some announcements and some notices I need to give to all those who are listening. And uh, many of our group secretaries have given these announcements now, and uh, they have asked that they be announced on this platform. So firstly, the uh, Sunday School, announcements from the Sunday School. The Sunday School Scripture Union examination for this year has now been cancelled. We have received an official word from the Sunday Scripture Union uh, board that the Sunday School Scripture Union examination for 2020 has now been cancelled. Secondly, the Sunday School and Bible Class Camp, this is for Mangere PIC, the Sunday School and Bible Class Camp has now been postponed until further notice. It perhaps may happen at the end of this year, or if not, it will happen next year. <coughs> now we come to the Samone Kalesia notices. There are two notices. The first notice, all the Mother's Day preparations by the Maftanga Tama and the Maftanga Tina, as well as the celebrations for Mother's Day, these have all been cancelled. The second notice for the Samone Kalesia uh, the Lafalafonga that was due to happen in June of this year has been cancelled. The Lafalafonga for this year, 2020, has been cancelled. Uh, the, the executive of the Samoni Kalisia has informed me that there is sufficient uh, funds in the Samoan account to continue on for the rest of this year. And the Lafalafonga for next year 2021 will resume again but for this year's La Fulafonga it is cancelled. The New Way Kalisia announcements the first the New Way Ahutapu Whanau the White Sunday for this year has been cancelled. The New Way White Sunday for this year usually held in the month of May has been cancelled. The New Way Fono for 2020 to be hosted by Mangere PIC, that has also now been cancelled. The new way for Nomoto has been cancelled for 2020. And the third notice, all Mother's Day preparations by the Matuatane and the APW new way for this year has been cancelled. The last uh, set of notices come from our Cook Island Air Kalesia. The Ririanga Vairua for this year, 2020, has been cancelled. Ririanga Vairua, for this year, 2020, has been cancelled. Secondly, all Mother's Day preparations by the Tainatini and the Vainatini, they have all been cancelled. The third announcement, the combined Cook Island Marple service uh, for the Auckland region has been cancelled. The combined Cook Island Marple service for the Auckland region has been cancelled. Fourthly, the program for the Komiti Uapo will now be on hold until everything returns back to normal. Those are our notices for today. Uh, as you will understand, many things have now been cancelled. But uh, we give thanks to God for the work of our group secretaries that even though we are in lockdown, they are able to communicate through to me. And we can communicate through to you, those who are listening, the uh, notices from each of our groups. Even though many of them have been cancelled, uh, the work of the Lord still continues on through your prayers and through uh, listening to the daily devotions as well as to our services online. The final words for this morning, people of God. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this, I'm sure this will apply to, to those overseas as well as to those in New Zealand. Remember the lockdown rules. God bless and protect all our essential workers and all those who are working from home. May the Lord keep you safe. Thank you for keeping not only New Zealand operating, but also your own countries where you reside in operating. Please keep safe, especially our elderly 
especially our vulnerable. God bless us all. Let us conclude this service in prayer. Let us pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. We will see you again tomorrow.